Making my way downtown. All right, here we are. Made it to my table. I fell off the table. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Orogiri. And today, due to popular request, we are making a guide on support partners. Or I guess I should probably change the title to assist partners. But I, in my mind, support, assist... It's the same thing. They're your helping handers. You know. So basically we're talking about, you know, assist partners. So currently on PS4, there is Parvis Gargoyle, Gargoyle, Satan Girl, and Tohoku Kiritan. So currently released on PS4, there are four assist partners. In the scope of PC, I believe there are a grand total of six so thus adding the sleet sword gargoyle and the levin lance gargoyle in their um, lolly forms in assist form so basically there are six in total we have four released to us thus far and for the most part they all pretty much build the same more or less um, there are slight differences and we'll go over that um, to the best of our knowledge, mainly focusing on these four, but we'll be um, delving into that for sure. Just uh... oh, they thank you, Loco. Thank you. I didn't know if comments were working, so I, I was about to pull up the stream on on my computer and get comments there. Um, so that's fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so. What, what's the first thing? Let, let's just talk about assist partners. It's been a while since I've done a guide formally, so hopefully uh, i just kick right back into it. I'll be fine. So support partners have a very, very big primary focus, and they can do, like, many, many, many things, okay? Like, support partners can assist you in attacking. They can buff you. They can heal you a little bit. But for the most part, they're not here to do massive amounts of damage. They're here to be a support character. They're here to assist the player in doing something that only they can do, that the mount can't do, that the vanguard can't do, that the yokai especially cannot do. And the primary focus, in my opinion, the primary focus of an assist partner is to give the player attack buffs. Oh... I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, attack buffs are going to be your main concern with support partners. Um, and the reason being is that support partners can boost your attack anywhere from 15 to 45 to 60% attack, depending on the character. And that might not seem like a lot to some people, but it's actually an enormous number. It, it's a percentage. It's a huge percent. And it is borderline game-breaking. Like, these characters are actually really, really powerful. Um, I know I've looked at the whole topic of these characters from different perspectives. And support partners early game, like if you're, you know, not at the 115 meta yet, you're not at 105 mags and 115 plus weapons, support characters are pretty bad. Like, if you start the game... And you have Parvis. Like, because everyone gets a Parvis. You do her quest. You get the raisins from Odin. Um, you know, you, you do all... You jump through all the hoops. And you get yourself a Parvis. Um, Parvis isn't really going to do much for you early game. Like, these support partners really, really shine late game. When your attack is really high from your weapons. You have uh, accessories either from the story, from the Neon Coral Pond. And your attack just scales up, 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 up. And your attack's super high. And then they give you an additional boost. And it puts your attack at ludicrous levels, okay? So, like, with me, I wear the two Toshi accessories as a spear. With an other side spear, two Toshies. Uh, I get the Satan buff. My attack is 100,000, okay? My attack goes up to 103,000 attack. Which is broken. It is, it is, it is insane. Like, with... That's what Satan. Satan's the one that has the biggest attack buff in the game. 
Uh, I'm really just talking about how, how these characters play out first before we get into builds and specifics and all that. Just giving you a general overview of how these characters are to be used to the fullest. So, in my personal experience, when I get Satan buffed, she gets me the attack buff. Crazy things happen, especially multi-hit things. These characters plus multi-hit equals broken. Like, um, a couple of months ago, um, me and Lyra were testing out support partners. And we got, like, the top first and second place on Mephistopheles. We went in. We got um, we got the partner to buff us, and we used multi-hit moves, and we we destroyed Mephistopheles. Like I was buffed, and my whirlwind thrust was doing like six million a tick or something like that. It was doing enough damage with just whirlwind thrust on an other side weapon. Was doing enough damage to take out Mephistopheles in like thirty seconds, like on hell, whatever, just done. And Lyra went in with Harvester on his axe, multi-hit move. He was cap and cap, 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 cap. He beat my time, like. It's it's pretty amazing. It's very amazing what they can do. And not only that, but they also have elemental buffs as well. Each character having their own elemental buff. But I think Satan and the Levin Lance Gargoyles elemental buffs overlap. They're both lightning, I believe. I don't have the lightning one, so I can't really look at it. Um, you know, but based off of how things go, like Gargoyle gives you fire. I think Parvis gives you fire too. Am I missing an assist finger? Am I? A am I missing one? Because earlier I thought it was Gargoyle, her two sisters, Parvis, Satan, and Kiritan. Is there another one? She's weak as fuck. It's not Brownie. Don't you be talking about Brownie. She. You. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a good one. You're way more than assist. But, um, you know, good icebreaker. So, let, let, let's now get into the nitty gritty. So, like, like I was saying, each of them has an elemental buff. Um, you know, Gargoyle is fire, Satan's lightning, Kiritan is wind. Um, the ice one's going to be ice. The lightning one's also going to be lightning. And I don't know what Parvis does. I think Parvis gives you fire, but it's a lesser extent than Gargoyle. I think, like, Parvis is, like, the free-to-play one. And Gargoyle is, like, the pay-to-win one, let's just say. Um, but let's start with Satan. I have Satan all built up. Um, and I, I just got Satan to 145. I'm waiting to get summoner scroll scrap thingies to get her to 150. But eventually, that's, that's my goal. And, um... Just so you know that all assist characters go to level 150. Um, and they level up by using scrolls. But I have to tell you guys right now before we do anything else. Um, when you want to give an assist partner a scroll, do not do it in the hearts, okay? Do not do it here. If you do it in the hearts section, it says, Oh, you have an overabundance of scrolls because Cyrus that believes you to pay $1,000 every update. And... Like, if you put it in there, all it does is give them, like, a million experience. That's it. It gives them, like, a bunch of experience. Not a million, like, a lot. Like, a, a substantial number. Um, <laughs> the weapon in the middle is going to make twins split, maybe. Um, we got to talk about weapons, too. That's crazy. Oh, my God. Dude, this is a very complex topic. We're going to be here for a while. So, sit on down, get some popcorn, and, you know, buckle up. Get those ears going. Um, but when you want to use additional scrolls to your vanguard to your assist partner and you can do this at any time i implore you to do it earlier rather than later to be honest uh there's no reason to hold off on them when you do it you want to click on the little red uh plus sign here because that's going to bump their level so if you click that thing it's going to say you don't have any covenant scrolls so that's what their scrolls are called covenant scrolls um but it basically it takes the scroll uses it there I know a lot of people wasted uh, Parvis scrolls unknowingly by putting them here, and they got turned into experience, and it's it's a very, uh, you know, it's a very annoying thing, very, very damaging. It's like, it makes you feel like you wasted it, because you can't just say, oh man, I want to get another one. It's like, it's not that easy. So like, or you can click on the awakening level thing. It's going to show you that, oh, she's got four scrolls, and then you can use the Accord scroll, which is... Uh, her scroll itself, they're called Accord Scrolls here. 
And then there is the Archive of Awakening scroll that goes here. And that's when you collect the 15 scraps that will be coming in future events. If you collect 15 Assist Partner Archives of Awakening scrolls, then you can use it here and it counts towards, towards a new one. And that's something that hasn't come yet, but there is an option for it. And you probably noticed at some point. We'll ever get her in the Ozuru shop? Maybe not. But we'll just have to collect the the the, the straps. Collect the scraps. Oh. So. Okay. So now that we've talked about like where you put scrolls in, like you you feed them experience tickets. By the way, I'm sorry if this guide's all over the place. But um. Make that point crystal clear about putting scrolls in because yeah. Exactly. Like. Exactly. Like you don't put your scrolls in on the plus. On the friendship button. You put them in on the red plus or on the awakening level unlocked. Uh, or else you're going to waste your scroll. You can't have my OC. I earned that OC. Can't have it, man. But welcome to the stream. Um, but how you level them up is from experience dungeons. So you have to run it on... You don't have to run it on normal or hard ever. Like, don't think, oh, they're level under 100. I got to use normal. I got to use hard. It doesn't apply to them. Um, <laughs> uh, Vanguard accessories... Or not Vanguard accessories. Oh, my God. I don't know what these things are called. Support characters. To me, they're accessories. Kind of. Sort of. Um... They level up from experience tickets, and you can just straight up run hell and feed them hell tickets from level 1. It doesn't matter. So whenever you're doing it on Saturday, Sunday, whatever, um, put those in there. Hey Nick, how you doing? So, they level up from experience tickets. You put your extra scrolls in from the red button or from this button here, and you never put them here. Okay, so I stress that. A lot thanks for bringing it up botch because it is a big thing so let, let's move on so how do you stat one of these characters right so my gar my, my my satan girl is pretty much done and i believe this is the trend in which you want to build up a support partner uh the first thing you want to do is you want to pump their mind you want to get their mind to a total of 91 so first thing you do, <laughs> you're donating plasma. Currently, how? You just like got a needle in your arm and you're like, oh shit, Oro Geary's on. Hold up, mid nurse. I got to watch this. Is that what's going on? <laughs> Wait, did I say my girl instead of Satan girl? Because <laughs> I was going to say gargoyle girl and I was going to say my I was going to say Gargoyle Girl, so then I said, 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 girl. So I just said, my girl? Is that what I did? Exactly, you are? Oh, my God. <laughs> but we'll focus on my Satan Girl, the one I've built up, and then we'll look at the others after. So you want to start with Mind, and you want to build them up until you get a grand total of 91 Mind. The reason for that being is the same thing with Staff. Is that with staff, you want to have exactly 75 Mind so you can cast Rank 7 skills. The same thing is true for support characters and on average i haven't seen all of them but from everyone i've seen to use their strongest attack buffs and we'll just pull that up right now just so you're not just looking at numbers and me talking about it um so let's say her biggest buff here shocking cleave attack five you have to find it on the right because they won't give you descriptions if you click on it there um shocking cleave attack it says, assists one person with attack power effect, raises attack power by 60%, but reduces defense by 30%. It lasts for a minute, and it requires over 90 mind, aka 91 plus mind. Um, some people say you can just do 90. Um, I don't I don't like playing that game, because I'm not watching my support character like 24-7 when I'm playing. I know that when she does something, she casts it, it works. Um, so I just say 91. It says over 90 mind, you put 91 mind. Easy. 
And when I got to 145, I managed to get extra stat points, so I put more stat points into it, putting her at 93 mind. Um, but that's for the attack buff, and that seems true. That The strongest attack buff requires 90 mind, and that's, that seems true throughout all these partners. Um, if we look at attack 4, you need no mind requirement at all, I guess. You, there's none. Um... You could use the, the second strongest one without a requirement. The third one, attack three. And everyone has like an attack one through five, by the way. Um, attack three requires you to have over 60 mind. So, while well, you missed all of fever, dude. Um, this one requires it to be over 50. Heal plus requires nothing. Heal three requires 60. Um, and, and so on and so forth. All the, the major buff skills like thunder... Needs over 85, stamina, over 80, critical, over 70. And I can't even get super cut yet, but it's 75. But basically, if you want to use the strongest attack buff on your characters, your support partners, um, which is the most important buff, you have to have 91 mind. So that should be your primary investment, is 91 mind. And then you want to dump all your stats into vitality. Okay, so in order of leveling them, it's 91 mind. And then you just massive dump into Vitality. You want to get Vitality to 100 for the main reason being that these characters have health and they can and will be killed. Um, I wouldn't recommend taking them anywhere remotely high level until you've actually leveled them up to around level 90 or 100 and given them... Um, a mind and vitality um, uh, investment or else they're just going to get one shot by everything so 91 mind 100 vitality then you're going to put the rest of your stuff into power because that's more hp and it gives them attack strength so you can use attack skills on them if you choose i do it because it's fun and they can kill stuff really they can kill mobs pretty effectively um, like Satan's can deal out a couple million damage and she helps me in dungeons um, It's it's pretty good in some situations against bosses It doesn't really matter and some attacks are flashy and they get in the way and they're not really helping that much um, But if you want to use everything on the partner then you know attack is important for their damage But for the most part you just want that power to give them extra health because it does that uh, You got your cores three tempest. There you go you're bored, but you got to do something with that. You, you got to do something with it. You can't just master all the arts and not go punch something in the face. But, I mean, you, you did punch literally everything in the face to get it, so there's that. But congratulations, nonetheless. Um, so, yeah, stat-wise, 91 mind, 100 vitality, rest into power. And then let's talk about why we don't invest into wisdom and dexterity. Okay, so dexterity... Visibly, Dexterity does nothing for the character. Um, the support partners gain, just like the player, one point... Says the one who barely remembers the game. I remember the game completely. Um, but Dexterity is just like the player where every 12 points into Dex gets you one point in crit. It's the exact same for Satan. So that means if you pumped Satan's Dexterity to 100 or... Any support partner for that matter. They're going to get like 20 crit out of it. 18. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth a damn. At all. And the same thing for wisdom. 24 points in wisdom would in turn give them 1 point to crit. <laughs> but uh, dexterity is really bad. Like attack speed for them. Like it, If it even affects invisible things like attack speed and all that. It wouldn't really matter. Um, they do have a status details page, and it shows cooldown cut, shows uh, HP recovery, skill force, SP recovery, HP recovery, critical force, attack speed, physical evade. They have a physical evade stat, a movement speed stat, SP reduction stat, all this stuff. Um, if anything, I believe wisdom... I believe Wisdom will boost SP reduction, but in the long run, I don't think it's that important. Um, it's definitely better than Dex. Like, Wisdom does lower um, 
wisdom does lower their sp costs in a way but that is not as important as getting your mind your power then your dexterity or you're sorry i was thinking of a different class entirely you it's not as important as getting your mind your vitality then your power if you do manage to max out all these stats and i don't think that's possible at 150 which is the highest cap a partner can go um, then you can start putting points into wisdom or if it's just too much points to focus into like mind more than you can put into wisdom but i was looking at my mind compared to wisdom when doing it and i could put like 13 points into wisdom but it would have gave me less total sp than one point in mind at 93 so i just put points into mind so that's what i did you've been playing the steam version someone someone else told me they've been playing the steam version Okay, so what do these stats look like all together? So the HP all together for Satan is about 58,000. And that's higher than the player health cap of 50,000. SP is like 3,200. Physical attacks, 40,000. Defense is 22,000. And then there's an equip bonus. So that's like her base attack. And that's the bonus from having a weapon. And there's a lot of stuff we can talk about for weapons. But we're going to get to that a bit later. So let's look at a different partner for comparison. So there's Parvis. Parvis is one that is fully, you know, everyone gets Parvis. So if you wanted to pump Parvis's level, you'd give her tickets here, not scrolls. Don't do it there. Uh, I got my Parvis to 145, the same level that Satan goes to. Like that's her total uh, potential level. I can't. Um... Not that I can't. Uh, get her higher. I just don't invest in her. Um, let me see. Yeah, like a couple points into mind is going to give her like 63 SP. I put points into Vit. She gains 500 health and a bit of defense. Power also gives health, but not as much. And it does scale based on how many points you put in. Um, wisdom... 14 can you like click that then do this cooldown cut of three why do you have a cooldown cut of three so if i took that out does it does onigiri work that way i've never really looked at it like that okay she just has a cooldown cut of three okay cool <laughs> there's no level 100 plus well they don't have experience dungeon right or do they i don't know Either way, I'm getting. So, I love the conversations in the in the chat, but it, it distracts me a bit because I want to be part of everything. Yeah. Okay. Duty balls. What? What even is that? All right. So we talked about stats, how they go in. We've talked about where to level them up, where to use tickets. You know, where you level them up, experience dungeon, you know, it's warding. Um, so let's talk about skills, okay? So in here we have auto setting, offense mode, support mode, and follow mode. Or we can't even click follow mode. How come? Why can't I click it? Oh, I can. I'm scared. I don't like it. Anyway. Almost four years in the game, and he says, is this how Onigiri works? Oh, man, like, we don't have... You can't look at your status page while doing your stats. I don't think you can. Status page never worked. On PC, you can, like, drag the windows and shit, and you can look at stuff. But we can't do that. But, um, you're right, though. But I've honestly never touched offense mode, support mode, or follow mode. I've only ever done order designation. And there should be more than one order designation... But there's only one, and it's really dumb. Um, but basically, every support partner has at least, I believe, five slots to start. And then you can get more if you offer stuff to the character. And sometimes it's 10 OC, or 99 of one drop, or another scroll. So, like, for example, I don't have this slot unlocked because it wants me to give them a Satan scroll to get that slot. And I don't think it's worth it. I don't know what they want it to do. Yeah. I answered that right as you're typing it. You have to give them a scroll. Uh, I believe 
one of them was like to get scroll six or slot six it was 10 oc slot seven was 99 satan drops and then slot eight is a satan scroll this is all based on satan by the way so let's look at all this mumbo jumbo flowchart stuff so priority one so this matters so order designation allows you to set the conditions such as the player or enemy status for ai skill use through setting the skill use intervals you can effectively manage the cooldown times of skills cannot set beyond the boundaries or below skills cooldown time so that means if a skill takes 60 seconds cooldown, you cannot tell the AI to use it in 50 seconds. You have to wait for the time for it to go by. However, you can tell it to wait two seconds and use it after you, like, you can time it all up. So be like, okay, when this one comes off cooldown, use A, then use B, then use D, then use C, or something like that. So I need two scrolls for her to be perfect? No. I would need, for her to be perfect, I would need one scroll to level her. One scroll for the slot and two scrolls for the weapon. So I would need to nine scroll this bitch. Like or eight scroll this bitch. <laughs> Basically. You would that's how many scrolls you would take on average to get everything unlocked for one of these characters, by the way. It is uh eight or nine, depending on the character. A very high bar. Of course, he almost has a perfect Satan assistant. I almost yes. So uh, let's just look at these numbers. So the first thing, priority one, shocking cleave attacks attack five. So that's what we we're talking about earlier. This is this is what makes Satan really good is that she has the biggest attack buff in the game, sixty percent at the cost of thirty percent of your defense. And at the same time, oh no, I'm losing defense. At the same time, people, I can wear a fusion bear and have zero defense. It doesn't really matter. Um, the defense loss is a worthy. It's a worthy sacrifice. It's barely even noticeable. You're not supposed to get hit anyway. So it's not that bad. And the attack buff is just gorgeous. Fantastic. Whether I'll roll for Satan or not is debatable. Depends on the unit. And we'll have to see. Maybe after the guide. Um, you got six invested in Kiritan? Wow. That's a lot. I know a guy who's got all but one skull in Kiritan. Alright. So... Since this is priority one to get my attack buff going all the time, its usage interval is 150 seconds. So for those of us who can do math, that's a little under three minutes. So, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Show us how to get one. Oh my god. You go to Parvis, you do some mumbo jumbo quests, you jump through some hoops, you get some raisins, you got yourself a Parvis. That's how it's done. <laughs> All right, so my settings is when the player HP is 100% or less, she will cast Shock and Cleave Attack on the player. Does your, does your weapon mags... Do your weapon mags affect assistance? Um... Your weapons that you're equipped with and your Magatamas that you're equipped with and your accessory that you're equipped with have no bearing whatsoever on your assist partner. The assist partner's stats are only going to be affected by their stat point distribution, uh, their level, and what weapons they have equipped. And there's certain bonuses you can get based on what weapons are equipped, and we're going to explore that in a bit. But it's a great question. Um... So, like I was saying, basically what all this says is as long as my health is 100% or less. So that basically means all the time, if available, priority one, Satan will hit me with an attack buff. That's my priority one. Priority two, the exact same parameters, she's going to hit me with Shocking Cleave Thunder 4. So Shocking Cleave Thunder 4 is the element buff. Let me try and find that here. Shocking Cleave Thunder 4 is the strongest element buff. Assists one person with Thunder Element. Increases Thunder... Oh, is it really Thunder Element? Isn't it Lightning in this game? Isn't it Lightning in this game? I'm pretty sure it's Lightning. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's not Thunder. But we'll ignore that for now. But it basically gives you 30 Thunder. 60 Thunder for, six, for 30 seconds. For half a minute, you gain... 60 lightning so a person like me that's usually walking around with three tempests it is lightning i thought so 
with someone like me that's going around with three tempests that puts me at like 150 thunder and <laughs> if i have a lightning a thunder weapon equipped like let's say the elsin that gives me like 60 thunder then i'm at 210 thunder so then if satan buffs me i'm now at 250 thunder which is max thunder so that's going to make rolling thunder a lot better or thunder beast or any thunder move in general um, with satan you're just max thunder super th super thunder mode and that's gonna last for 30 seconds and it's really good um next i have her with a bunch of attack things because i like her to hit stuff like she's got brilliant falls it's a high level attack i have it so that when her health her own health is 80 percent or more so when she's on high health she's gonna attack something and then when my health is 100 percent or less so as long as i'm full health when the player is 100% or less. Really? When player... See, I do this stuff, and it's going to be weird, but... When player HP is 100% or less, she'll use Annihilation 3. And that just means... She'll always use Annihilation 3. It has like an 8 second cooldown. <laughs> but that's a lower priority, so she's always going to use buffs. But when she's not using buffs, she's going to go hit something. Then we have when, when her own health when her own hp but the official theme song of this update is thunder by imagine dragon i've never heard that one i only heard that one good song they did when own hp is 80 percent or less she'll cast shocking cleave heal on herself so this is important okay um you cannot heal your support partner okay you as awesome as that would be, support partners are unaffected by Sanctuary, they're unaffected by Heal, they can't be targeted, you can't Invig them, you can't hit them with Extend Heal, you can't hit them with Extend Heal Geki, you can't hit them with Venus's Ogi, you can't hit them with anything. The only way your support partners are going to heal is if they do, them to, do it to themselves. So while some people might say, oh wow, this partner can heal me by 10,000, I want them to do that. Um, well... Yeah, that's okay, but you can just push square and eat a Shenlong. Support partners can't use a Shenlong. So you have to have them using one of their own heal skills on themselves. So Shocking Heal plus plus one, or whatever this is called. Shocking Cleave Heal plus plus one. Let me just find I think it is 10,000. Yeah. Assist self with HP regeneration. Restores 10,000 HP to self. And it can only be used on her. Like, they know how, they, of course, they know how things work. Um, it has SP cost of 200 and a cooldown time of 30 seconds. So every, every 30 seconds they can heal themselves by 10 sec, by 10,000. So I have it so that when her HP is 80% or less, like I don't want her using this at 90%. 80% seems good because by the time she starts casting it, maybe she gets hit again, she goes down to 40%, and then her skill puts her back up to like 85 or something, let's say. So I'd like to have it about 80% or less. And then when her own SP is 80% or less on herself, she'll cast Shocking Cleave Magic 2. And Shocking Cleave Magic 2 is a 15 Invig. Magic 1 is a 10 Invig. You never want these to ever target the player because they cannot be overwritten and are considered an Invig. And for most players, your meditation is going to be better than 15 way better than 15. the only reason you want to even use this is so that she can use it on herself to give herself more sp over time however the sp cost is kind of steep to use it at 250 but after the amount of ticks that it goes by it kind of balances itself out with natural regen and it, it works like it gives them sp else they're just going to be like at low sp the entire fight and they'll just keep using moves and they'll never be able to do anything so it's basically a self invig and then I have another attack. It's Treason Pillar. But theoretically, um, not even theoretically, like objectively speaking, if you were going into like a big boss battle and you just wanted support buffs, all you would have your support partner do is give you an attack buff, give you an element buff, make sure they can heal and invig themselves, and then you're left with another slot because I believe it's five is the limit. And you can use that to either give them another attack buff. Like I used to run attack 5 and attack 4. 
so that when attack five wore wore out and was on cooldown, she would hit me with attack four or attack three, whichever one's better. It's kind of debatable. Um, like, like I don't know why there's so many different attacks. Oh, did I just change that? Oh shit! I can't believe I've done this. But even if you change stuff, you just gotta hit proceed, or else nothing will nothing will matter. You have to, have to you have to hit proceed at the end of it. Um. But attack 3 and attack 4 are unlocked at different times, and it's kind of weird. But attack 3 is a cooldown of 70 seconds. It will boost your power by 40% and reduce your defense, and it lasts for a minute. So for a minute, you're going to gain 40% attack, and the cooldown 70%, um, a 70 second cooldown. But then you have attack 4, that's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. It's 40% attack, reduces your defense, but it only lasts for 30 seconds. So this is a misconception. Um, attack 3 is usually better than attack 4, but attack 5 is going to be like balls deep. This is the big one. So if you wanted to do like a two attack buffs, you would go attack 5, and then after attack 5 wears off, you have her use attack 4. A bit later so generally on like a five priority skill list you would have your big attack buff your big element buff um, healing healing and then another attack buff just so like it can continually give you attack buffs that's generally how you'd want to set them up but since I have extra slots I just like to use Satan's cool attacks so I put them on there so I'll close out of that um, so let's just look at Kiritan, look at her order designation for right now. Actually, um, I apologize. There are other things support partners can do, aside attacking attack buffs and stuff, and invigs and all that, and I forgot to look at them, but I should look at them. So just to give you a rundown, like there's D3 combo. This is literally her basic attack. It costs no SP, she can use it every four seconds, and she just hits stuff. Then there's other attacks, Glorious Ruin, uh, eight second cooldown, 90 SP, it's an attack. Annihilation, another attack. Rapid Lightning, another attack. Treason Pillar, another attack. It's unlocked at 130, so it's really strong. 5,000 skill force. Brilliant Fall, same thing, 2,000 skill force. Atrocious Claw, same thing, 5,000 skill force. Execution Kiss 3 is unlocked at 150. It's her 7,920 skill force move that I don't have, and I would love to have it, but it's the strongest thing she can do. Um, an imperative ray as well unlocked at 150 1300 skill force must be cool. I don't know why it's only 1300, but same deal So then she also has five different heals. So what heals do you want to use? Shocking heal or shocking cleave heal one is health Regeneration, so it's not a direct heal. It's literally an invig for health and it's not as good as the heal plus The heal plus can only be used on her by the way but the heal, like, 3 would be used on the player. Like, a skill like this, she could use it on the player. Because it assists one person. So that's for healing the player. But like I said, Papa Shenlong, don't rely on the partner. By the time they get around to healing you, you'll probably die. I, I stay away from these things. I don't want to use them. Then there's the Cleave Magic. That's the Invig. You only want her to use it on herself, not on you because it's really bad. Um, then there's the attack buffs, amazing. The element buffs, amazing. And then partners will start... These says partners start to have unique things near the bottom of their skill lists. And for Satan, it's stamina, critical, and cut. Um, stamina is assist one person with stamina, conduct, stamina consumption reduction. It's a pretty unique effect that's only shared with the Magatama of Emanation. Um, and what that means is... When you do a roll or you block, it will consume less stamina, so you can do it more without getting your guard broken. Um, I think it's cool in concept, but to waste a slot just so that you can roll more is kind of kind of lackluster in my opinion. But that that's what it is. It's 50%, so you can roll like twice as much almost. Uh, for 30 seconds, I don't think it's that important. Um, then there's Critical Plus. Critical Plus is pretty cool. Um, but it's kind of like an abyss effect. So it assists the summoner with an increase to critical damage. The effect raises critical damage by 40%, but lowers critical stat by 40%. So essentially, it gives you 40% bonus 
two crit force. 40%, not 40 crit force, 40%. So if you had, I'm going to whip out the calculator really quick here because math and numbers are important. Um, let's say the average crit force is 230. That's a fuse build. 230 crit force. So 230 um, plus 40. Oh shit. I messed it up. I hit period instead of like a zero. So 230 plus... 40 percent 92 you would basically if you had three fuse and this happened you'd be at max crit force okay max crit force right off the bat done however you lose 40 percent critical so even if you had 100 crit your crit would go down to 60 percent but that's still pretty good but at the same time you know like It's it's kind of good to boost your crit force to maximum, but you'd have to have a such such a high crit for in order for it to work. Like if you only had like 50 crit and you lost 40% of that, well you're going down to like close to 30 crit. And it could work for some builds that are really multi-hit based, but other than that, I think it's better to consistently crit rather than to nerf your crit for that it's really debatable because I do that personally. Like I, I wear a crit force sparrow all the time instead of crit. Um, but it's, it's a really up in the air kind of skill. Like it's one of those things where if you want to do it, go for it. But if you don't want to do it, don't go for it. But it can make you really, really powerful. Um, especially if you're in a Vanguard or, or not, because these support partners, their buffs do affect Vanguards. I didn't mention this earlier, but it is true. So like, now, now here, here's here's the big one, basically. If you get an attack buff from Satan, and you're in Miyamoto, and you use Heart, you're at 200,000 attack. Assuming that, like, Vanguard's attack is the same as your attack. It's not. They have less attack, but their skill force makes up for it. Either way, um, since Heart, basically, Miyamoto's Heart doubles your attack. If you get an attack bonus from one of these characters, and then you use Heart, you're they all like multiplicative all come together and you do god tier damage like super super god damage like your attack goes so high like i mean sepulcher is probably gonna damage cap like every tick like it does that anyway sometimes but it's just ludicrous what support partners can do with miyamoto's heart it's a kind of a crazy combination but anything like that at all anything that boosts the character's attack or let's say, like, Sam brought up Kieran for a second. Like, if Kieran's using her buffs that don't really boost your attack, but they boost your element, but then you get a buff from a partner, and now Kieran's at, like, max lightning, and her attack's astronomically high, well, every little lightning move is going to be doing damn near cap. Like, you're just cap, 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 clap, clap, clap. Like, that's just how it goes. Um, but the critical buff is kind of good, but it, it, de it depends what you're doing. And then the last one that's unlocked at 150 is cut um, for Satan anyway. And it's basically, it reduces your cooldown by 20, but increases SP consumption by 20. I don't think it's that good because for the most of us, our accessories, if you have accessories, are going to boost your cooldown. Your mags are going to boost your cooldown. Weapons like other side boost your cooldown. Um, I think using up a whole slot just to get 20 cooldown isn't really that important. Um, and it boosts your SP consumption, which can somewhat be bad, somewhat be good. But I don't think it's that important, like 20 cooldown. Because it's not 20% cooldown, it's just 20 cooldown. Um, like, I don't think it's worth, like, going into, like, okay, Satan's going to give me 20 cooldown, so I'm going to change my mags so that my cooldown still stays at max, and min-maxing it, and then next thing you know, Satan dies. Like, you can't really build around it. Like, it's, it's, I, I don't think it's that important. Like, the main thing is attack, element, attack, and then sustaining the partner themselves. Because if the partner dies, they die. That's it. Good job. It's over. You need to... That's, like, that's that's my approach to these characters. Um, so that's all their skills there. Let me get out of here. And I'm sorry if this guide's all over the place, because there's so much to talk about with these characters. I wish it was just point and click, but that wouldn't be a very Orogiri kind of video. Um, but you did ask, if is there a Kirin and Oda video guide? I believe I've done a guide on Oda, and I believe I've done a guide on Kirin, but you... I don't remember. I know I did something on Oda. 
but I don't know if I did one on Kieran or not. I might have. I think I did because I talked about all the timings and stuff. I believe I did do it. I believe I did do them, Sam. Um, so let's look at Kiratin real quick for people that do have Kiratin because I know a lot of people chose her right off the bat. Um, so my Kiratin, same thing, 91 mind, and then I put everything into Vit. I haven't leveled her high enough to do anything else beyond that, but same stat point distribution. Kiratin's health is actually really, really high at the end. Gargoyle and Kiratin's health is a lot higher than Satan's when you fully max them out. Just a little trivia I know there. Just throwing that out. Um, Kiratin has outfit changes. So she has Witch Kiratin if you get it. And then there's regular Kiratin. I'm not sure if it gives extra skills or not. But we'll go look. I don't think it does. So, wow, they only start with four. My apologies. I thought characters had five. So what do you need to do for the first one? Ten Orgiri coins. Okay. Alright. What's the next one? 20 only degree coins. Okay. Maybe. Okay, so 30 OC gets you 6 slots for Kiratin. Fantastic. Um, then you need 999 friendship paperbacks. Do it. Not enough friendship paperback. Well, I tried. And the last one is a scroll. So the last one's always a scroll. Then it's 2 things for OC. And then it's 999 of some drop. Or 99 of some drop. And then you're good to go. So what I did for my Kiratin is basically the bare bones of what I was talking about before. That gold digging. What? Whoa. That's some... Um, did you censor that in Joyful or did... Or, I don't think... You, you must have self-censored that. There's no way. Um, but basically, you know, same thing as before. When player HP is 100% or less, always cast attack. 100% or less, cast your element buff. When player's health is 100% or less, cast shield and savior. I don't even know what these are, but I just put the buffs on. Oh, you did. Okay, I was about to say. Sony better not be going that far. So let's see. Um, so Kiratin has like basic attacks and basic stuff. I don't have most of it unlocked, but lots of attacks. Um, what is that? Artillery. What's all this stuff? It's all locked. Does she have... Ki Oh, okay, it's two different skills. I was like, what skill is going to plus six? Okay, so she's got lots of attacks. And then she has heal. Same thing as Satan. Heal, same thing as Satan. Heal question mark. Assist one person with HP regeneration. Restores targets HP by 1500. So I guess that would be 1500 health per second. Oh my god. No, it's just 1,500 health. And then the next one is Assist Self with HP Regeneration. That's a crazy heal. Kiratin heals herself for 50,000 health. That's the maximum player health in the game. So that's that. you'd definitely throw that on. Kiratin Power Heal question mark 1. Wow. Wow. She just fully heals herself. That's crazy. Kiratin Power Magic is 15 SP. Kiratin Magic... Two is 40. She gets a 40 invig. Wow. I wish Satan got a 40 invig. That's crazy. Super heal, super invig. Kiratin power. Assist one person with attack power. So that's the thing we already looked at before. So one, two, three, four, five. Five being the big one of 45%. Having no drawback, just 45%. Three is 30% over 60 seconds. Five is 45% over a minute. And then 4 is 30% over 30 seconds. And then there's Wind. Wind is 60 Wind Element. That's really good. 60 Wind Element over a 30 second period of time. Very good. And then she has Shield, Power Shield. What is this? Power Shield 1? Let's look at Power Shield 2. Um, target. What? Oh, oh, my friend said this was a, a typo. It, they just copy and pasted. This is not a Wind buff. It's Power Shield times 2. So power shield is basically targets the summoner and assist. Target the summoner and assist. Oh, and assist with decreasing SP consumption. So what this does is it says SP consumption, but its effect is that it raises your defense by 15 
And there's a typo. God bless Cyberstep. So I'm assuming the next one buffs your defense by like 30% or something, which is a very high number. Then there's Power Saver, which, th yeah, this is the one that's going to reduce your SP consumption by 25%. Not that important, in my opinion. Then there's Power Cut. There's a lot of these. Power Cut Assist Summoner with increase in cooldown cut. So same thing as with Satan, so 20% cooldown cut. Then there's attack. What is this? What? Assist the player who summoned carries. Why does it say that? You must have Tohoku Zunko. So she does have skills if you have Zunko or not. Assist the player who summoned Kiritin in raising their attack power and movement speed. So these are big buffs. Kiritin gets special buffs if you have Zunko and Kiritin. And that is 45% attack and 20 movement speed. Very, very potent combo. You'd probably... You could run that over like you'd have power five and then you'd run attack blessing um what's this one so if you have zunk wow so these these are just better than all the other skills raise defense by 40 percent and recover 400 hp per second per second that's pretty good that's 40 percent defense holy shit and then reduce cooldown time by 20 percent and recover sp so it's an invig and cooldown that's crazy and there's more holy shit Wow. Oh my god. But you have to have Zunko to get them. That's crazy. Oh, unlock outfit change Fox Maiden. What? You get a skill. Oh, it's it's an attack, but you have to have a fox skin for her. You have to, I didn't even know there was a fox skin for Zunko or Kiritin. Just a bunch of skills based on what's her sister's name? Itako? Yeah. No buffs, though. Just a bunch of skills. But yeah, th those buffs are really sweet. Cooldown. Def especially the defense buff and the attack and speed buff. You'd probably run on Kiritin, like Kiritin Power 4, Wind 4, and then you'd use the attack blessing and uh, the shield blessing just for crazy defense. Like, that's, that's actually a big boost. That's pretty sweet. <sighs> but, more or less, like... I hope, even though I'm going over each character and what they can do, I hope the gist is, is coming through. That you want to attack buff, element buff. You want to use a skill that's going to have the partner heal themselves. Invig themselves and then another attack buff and then if you have extra slots and you have room you can play with them put in some attacks if you want them but for the most part attack element buff sustain and then another buff while the other one's on cooldown that's generally how you want to play them um so let's get out of there let's look at parvis for comparison's sake because why not so parvis starts at four slots how do you get more slots on parvis only Gary coins, okay. What's this one? 20 Gary coins, okay. What's this one? 99 Infernal Marrows, do it. Not enough Marrow, okay. And then you need a scroll. So that's, that's generally it. It's like 30 OC, 99 of an item, and then a scroll. So Parvis, basically everyone has access to Parvis. Let's look at her a bit real quick here. So same thing, 100% or less. You want her to cast the Greedy Mercy Attack 5. Let's see how strong Greedy Mercy Attack 5 is compared to the Paid Vanguards or the Paid Supports. It is 35%, 4 is 20%, 3 is 20%, 10%, and 5%. So the highest Pyrovis is going to give the player is 35%, which is half of what Satan gives, but only 10% less of what Kiritin gives or what Gargoyle gives. So keep that in mind, that's not bad to still get 35%. It's not the highest tier that Satan could deliver, but it's still a hefty number and still usable. Uh, her fire buffs are 45 fire. That's pretty good. That's not bad. 45 fire, 35 attack, still very useful. Don't underestimate Parvis. And then Parvis has Rapid, which is increases the player movement speed for 30, so it's a Rapid Storm, basically. Um... And then she has quick, and quick is attack speed. I don't know how desirable that is, but she has it. And then she also has cut, 
and cut is increases cooldown by 15. So Parvis is usable. She's definitely the, the free man's like you know, she's accessible to everyone. Like she's like what's the term? She's like the, the poor man Satan, but there's so many different things, like but she's definitely usable. Like don't on, like don't underlook Parvis. Like if you got a Parvis, take some time out of your weekend, build her up, level her up, get some points into her, get some weapons into her, and she can do really well. Um, her heals, I'm just going to double check how much she heals herself with. Um, so heal 1 is 1,000. Heal 2 is 20,000. So she's able to heal herself for 20,000 health. Pretty good, better than Satan. But that means she's able to keep herself alive and she can cast it every 15 seconds. So Pyrus isn't going to be dying so long as the boss isn't one-shotting her. Uh, the magic is 30 SP per second. That's really good. So if she's giving herself... 30 SP per second, and so basically heal and magic, so attack, fire, heal, magic, attack, and then another one. So does it matter if we smelt the weapons first? The weapons that you give them, it does matter if they're smelted because it's their total attack that matters. And we're going to talk about what the weapons do in just a little bit, Blaster Kid, if you want to hang around. But yeah, like the, basically the stronger the weapon, the better for partner characters. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty basic. If you understand the concept from the other partners, just translate it to this one. Um, probably the same for Gargoyle as well. Gargoyle is just going to be like better than Parvis though, more or less. So what is it? 10 OC? 10 OC. Yep. 20 OC. Got it. What's this? 99 Infernal Marrows. Don't have enough Infernal Marrows. And then a scroll. Yeah. Okay. So I've never used Gargoyle, so I'm just going to put stuff on her. What can she do at level 1? Probably nothing. Probably absolutely nothing. She can do absolutely nothing. I'm not going to do anything. Because I didn't level her. But we can still look at skills even if they're locked. So let's do that now. So heal two. Does she have heal three? She's a heal three. Oh yeah, they all have heal three. What are we talking about? So heal plus. She heals fifty thousand health to herself every fifteen seconds. She is just shitting on powers. And then the basic heal. And then there's magic one fifteen. And then magic two forty. You were just looking for gameplay to see if this game is good. Is this game good? Uh, hey Jordan. Um yeah. The game is good. It is a couple years old now. It's probably about five, six years old. Um, the graphics aren't the greatest, but the gameplay is really, really fun, really compelling. And once you come to understand how, like, builds work, like how Magatamas affect you, like skill force and element, and the fact that every weapon is your own weapon. Like, it's not really class-based. It's a weapon-based game. So whatever weapon you equip and the skills you put on your weapon is unique to you as a player. Whereas other MMOs, if you pick a certain class, everyone in that class has the same the same kit, no matter what. But in Onigiri, every class has a certain amount of skills. You can only use about five, three to five on a weapon. And you basically determine your play style, how you build your weapons, how you build yourself, how you ornament things. And it's a very, very individualized MMO. Like, there's a lot of individuality in it, and I really enjoy that aspect of the game. And the combat's really fun. The combat's like a watered-down Dynasty Warriors kind of game. So there's mobs everywhere, Dungeon Explorer. You get to hit them all, fight them, run away, block, use healing, use support, use skills, use magic, use fire, use anything you want. Any weapon you want. Nothing really limits you in this game. You put your stats in as you want them, min-max anything whatever you want if it's a game like that that you're interested in something where you get to personalize yourself you're going to spend hundreds of hours in the game having a good time having fun exploring things learning things farming things overcoming things um, that's the biggest um, biggest praise and description i could give for this game the the virtues in it that i really enjoy the reason i still play it um, and that i was drawn to it in the first place so if those appeal to you i suggest you know trying the game out um, the only real cons to it are is that the development team isn't the greatest at times. They mess up some updates and stuff. Um, the game, you will get disconnection errors every now and again if you play for long periods of time. Uh, so expect crashes. But apart from those small setbacks and the fact that it is a gotcha-based game, 
um, it is a very solid game if you if you choose to play it. So thanks for the, thanks for the comment, Jordan. Uh, hopefully that hopefully um, that speaks to you and gives you the answer you want you wanted to hear, or maybe you didn't want to hear it. Maybe you didn't want to play a game and he's like, shit, this sounds good. But either way, hopefully um, hopefully that satiated your curiosity. Thanks thanks for coming in the stream. So who is this gargoyle? Yeah, you downloading it now? All right, man. Tell me how it goes. And if you have any questions, like my channel has lots of guides. You can comment on things. And I'll answer it within a week, let's say. And I know someone's going to be like, bullshit. I commented six months ago and you never replied to me. Like, you know, I tend to reply to most things when I get time. But yeah, man, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. And, and use this channel like it's a resource for sure. Um... And there is a wiki, all that stuff too. So feel free to use that stuff. That's that's the main resource. But I'm more of a hands-on lecture-based kind of like explain things kind of guy. So Gargoyle has big, big heals. Her invig is really big, 40 invig. She's never running out of SP. Uh, how big is her greedy mercy attack? Her greedy mercy attack five is 45%. Just 10 more than Gar than Parvis, and the same as Kiratin. Her fire buff, is it 60? It's 60 fire buff, so better fire buff than Parvis for sure. Um, her rapid is 20? Really? Her rapid is less than Parvis's. Interesting. Uh, she also gives attack speed, 25 attack speed. Okay, not really that important. And this must be cut. They all have cut, I guess, 20%, 20 cooldown. Okay, interesting. I think that's all of them. We talked about all of them. Oh my god. I'm so happy. Yeah, not not sponsored at all. Enjoyful, not at all. Unless I'm doing an April Fool's video, then, then I'm not sponsored. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about weapons. And I know this video is an hour long, and it's me saying the same thing over and over and over. But that's how we learn. Doing things over and over. Let's talk about weapons. And we're going to talk about how to optimally build a character's weapons so you can use them the most effectively. So, these characters here... When you give them a weapon, it boosts their overall attack. To my knowledge, it doesn't boost HP, it doesn't boost SP, it boosts their attack. So this weapons only really matter if you want your support character to attack. Otherwise, I believe they don't have an impact. But I could be wrong and we'll explore that now. So um, each character can only equip a certain weapon... They, they can only equip a certain weapon on the main slot, and then they can have one of three weapons on every other slot. So let's say for Gargoyle, I want to unlock this slot. How, what do I have to do? I need a scroll. That's a weapon. If I want to unlock this slot, I need a scroll. If I want to unlock this slot, she needs to be level 20. If you want to unlock this slot, she needs to be 60. If you want to unlock this slot, 130. If you want to unlock this slot, 100. So she doesn't actually require any OC to unlock the slots. You just got to level them up. That's pretty nice. Parvis, I'm not so sure. You have to get a Parvenant scroll. Scroll. Level 130. And level 100. Okay, so same thing. I could have swore I had to use OC to get one of these open, but I guess not. And since Satan's 145, she has... Seven of the nine slots unlocked, and these two require scrolls. Uh, Kiritin. Yep, yeah, Kiritin's 77, so she has five open. This one, level 100, and this one, level 130. And then two Covenant scrolls. So that's, that's the basic formula for all of them. Okay. So, let's just go to Gargoyle, since Gargoyle has literally nothing on her. This weapon here is called the Flame Gate. It's her basic weapon that you'll see her carrying. It's a little, um, uh, it's not a Nova, but it's a flare. It's a flare spear, basically. Um, and let's look at her effect bonus. So, right, the grade of your weapons and the rank of your weapons is going to affect how much of a bonus they get to attack power and grade also affects their skill attack power so it's going to affect their skill force basically so this effect bonus thing is basically let's say every single weapon you equip to your partner is all gold that's going to affect the weapon's rank 
And if every weapon is at grade 100, that's also going to affect this bonus. So comparatively, let's go look at Parvis. So Parvis, for me, is equipped with the Dark Lance of Oblivion warped at plus 100. Okay, and that has 13,000 attack. And for Parvis, that translates to giving her 9,828 attack. So on these characters, whatever you put as their main weapon is literally going to be the main source of their attack. Everything else is supplementary and only is going to give you a little bit. I kind of just didn't want to give her any weapons, so I gave her a Titanium Cudgel, Titanium Cudgel, Mithril Cudgel, and a Mithril Cudgel. Because I don't really use Parvis. So let's go to Satan, someone I actually do use. And we'll look at the weapons I give Satan. So Satan, as we can see in her profile... Oh, she doesn't have the picture there. But um, she uses the... Um, the twin cross weapon, the, um, it's not the end of days. What is it called? I'm so confused. I don't know what that's called. That was so sad. The twin cross. What is that called? There's Omen of Doom. There's L end of days. It's not the Galagos. The D3. She uses the D3 cross. Oh my God. That took me three years. But basically she uses twin swords. So her main weapon has to be a twin sword. And for me, my strongest twin sword was the other side twin blades. And I have them at plus 100, so I gave her that. And that affects her attack by... Let's see. If I were to give her the Giron sword, her attack goes down by 10,000. If I were to give her the Flame Town Flogger, another 10,000. Twin blades of agony at plus 50, her attack goes down 6,000. Attack goes down 8,000. And the ciphers put her down by 10,000. So these weapons are basically giving her, like... 12,000 of this attack. There it is right there, the D3 cross. Oh my god. So what I put is I gave her the Garma Kilma cross at plus 30, the Blue Moon Blade Aura F at plus 100, the Mihana Notsurugi Tempest at plus 0, the Rising Cross Hold at plus 0, the Crystal Twin Blade Invidia at plus 0, and the D3 cross at 100. Um... So let's look at our effect bonus on this one. So because of the grade and the rank bonus I have, Satan gains 72% skill force for rank and 71% skill force for grade. Or it's percent. This one's not a percent? Or is the decimal messing with it? I, I need to check Gargoyle for a second. Does, does that one have a percent? It doesn't. Okay, so one's a percent and one's not. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, and that's a glitch. Okay. So right now it shows, oh, you're wearing the Twin Blades of Agony. But I never equipped that. Where's my other side? It's missing. Oh, no. It's actually not missing. It's just a glitch that happens when you look at all the weapons and stuff. Um, I think if you go back in, it'll still be messed up. Yeah, because now it's showing that I have a D3. I have nothing equipped here. At all. I have a D3 and I have a D3 cross. Where's my other sides? Oh no, it's gone. What do I do? Oh no. What you do is you change channel. And this is actually a big deal. Like People have lost weapons because they don't know what's going on. When this stuff happens. And it does happen. It does. Like when you're changing weapons on these characters. They will glitch. They will disappear. And you'll be like oh my god what do I do? What the hell's happening? Where's my weapon? And it's back. Fantastic. No harm no foul. Okay. So. Here's the biggest thing that I have to talk about when it comes to weapons. So generally. Let's just explain this. If you want to maximize the output you get from attack with these weapons, first of all, you'd have to unlock all nine slots. So that means you get the character to 130, and you have two extra scrolls that you use here, and you use here. You cannot use, let's say, the supplement, like the... Um, this thing here. You can't use an Archive of Awakening... To trigger this, it will. You cannot do it. It has to be the specific scroll for the character to open that slot. So 
Archive of Awakenings are better off used for unlocking their awakening level and saving real scrolls for bonus slots if that really mattered to you um, in the long run. But that's that's near, nor here nor there at the moment. Just just if that was available to you and you had like let's say you had seven scrolls and you had two articles of awakening you would use the two articles of awakening scrolls to get part get your partner to 150 and then you'd use the two real scrolls on the slots like that's what you would do you know let's just hypothetically speaking um, but if you wanted to maximize how strong they are you find a weapon that's a gold tier weapon that's really strong and you put it on every slot and it's all at plus 100 and just perfect world right that's what you do um, so if Yogg was around and you're just getting a bunch of Yogg weapons, that's what you could throw in there. So if you had like nine other sides, you could put nine other sides in there and it'd be fine. Um, Satan has to have twin swords in the first slot, but there's nothing that says like you can't put like an, like Satan uses a twin axe and Odachi. So let's say you had an other side Odachi and other side axe and the other side twin you could put them all there and just put a collection of all your strongest weapons of that type there um so since other sides aren't around right now what is the if you really want to maximize your support partner the weapon you can grind to put into every single slot you'd have to farm it you'd have to you know use artisans on it and all that stuff the weapon, the strongest weapon that you can put into every single slot in order to give you the maximum grade bonus, that means you smelted it all the way up to grade 100 plus 100, they're all gold tier weapons. The best way to do this is with Reverence 3 weapons. So the Rev 3 is available to anyone who does this, the Lancelot quest line. Um, it's the strongest, well debatably it's the strongest weapon that can be farmed that's not another side so basically the rev and the supreme i'm not saying no one should really use supremes because they take those extra drops but if you have extra drops you can put a supreme in there if you want supreme and rev 3 have the exact same attack um and other side would take so much energy it's not really worth building it just for this purpose but you could do it but like objectively speaking if you wanted to max out every single slot you would farm up this would take a lot of time by the way like seven to nine reverence three weapons smelt them all to 100 it doesn't matter what skills are on them and you pump them into every slot and now you have the maximum attack quotient or not quote i don't know what that word means maximum attack possible that you could put on your support partner next question what are these little black squares and people have clicked on them and they've lost weapons why so let's look at the mihana no surugi and we're going to click this black box the black box it says we'll use a big number of ryu to fix this slot and that is is that two million six zeros yeah, it would take 2.1 million to fix this slot. And what that's going to do is buff our attack by like 40. <laughs> okay, so what this says is it uses a lot of money to fix the slot. Because apparently every slot is broken. But it doesn't mean broken as in fixed. Like unbroken, unfixed. You're not repairing anything. When it means fix, it means to fix in place. It is a permanent decision. So if you click this little check mark... It means, yes, I commit this weapon to this slot. Then it says, releasing a fixed weapon will cost Onigiri coin. Okay, what does that mean? So that means after you've checked the little mark and you want to take that weapon out, it's going to cost you 10 OC to take it out. If you say, no, I do not want to pay 10 OC to fix this, to remove, to safely remove this slot, it destroys your weapon. Okay. I don't know why they put this mechanic in the game. It's actually straight up bullshit why it's even there. They know that no one reads the dialogue. No one reads a damn thing in this game. And people lose weapons to this. And I'm sorry this is an hour and 15 minutes into the video. But it's very important. If you ever click this little check mark. It's going to boost your attack by like 1% or something. 
And that means you can never remove the thing or else you have to pay 10 OC or whatever OC number they throw at you to get it back. So comparatively, let's say we take something higher tier like the other side. Let's click that little check mark, shall we? It will cost a fuck ton of money. So one, two, three, one, two, three. It would cost like 29 mil, I think. It would cost you 29 million Ryu to fix this slot in place. What does that do? It buffs her attack by like 3,000 because it's such a stronger weapon. Um, yeah, so hey, Rhyme, how are you joyful? Um, can you even get all the slots open? You can, but to get all nine open, you need to give them two extra summoning scrolls. One per slot. The seven, you just need to get the partner to 130 and you have all those slots open. But the last two, you need to give them extra summoning scrolls, which is just better off leveling them anyway. Um, you know, getting those awakened and getting them to 150. Um, but that's what it would do. It would boost the attack up by 3000. However, it means that if I ever need these other side twin swords to do something, or I want them or whatever reason, or, you know, I'd have to pay OC to get them back. That, that's what fixing it does. Um, I really don't want to fix anything in place. But, like, some people click it, it's like, oh, it's going to boost my attack. Okay, it's like, oh, I want my weapon out. And then they, they lose their weapon. It, it literally destroys it. Um, let me do it with Parvis real quick. I did it! I did do it with Parvis real quick. So I did check the slot. This slot is fixed on my Titanium Cudgel. Okay, I'm glad I did this a long time ago. So let's say, hey... Consume Onigiri coins to release this weapon? 10 Onigiri coins will be used. Are you sure? Free Onigiri coins balance will be used first. So my OC will go down by 10. Consume Onigiri coins to release this weapon. Cancel. Releasing a weapon without Onigiri coin will cause the weapon to be destroyed. Okay, this is a cudgel. I don't care about it. I'm going to show you right now. Okay, my weapon is now destroyed. It's gone. The cudgel is gone. Destroyed permanently. They put it in the game and said, hey, you want your weapon back? You got to pay OC. It said it's 10 OC for that. I don't know what OC it is for the Dark Lance of Oblivion. I'm not going to go that far. Are you crazy? Uh-uh. That weapon is gone. I do not have a Mithril Cudgel on me. I do not believe. Sword, bow, and spear. I have a bunch of artisan swords. But I do not believe I have a Mithril Cudgel on me on person. I don't. It's gone. Deleted. So, I don't recommend anyone ever really do that. Like, I don't even, like, unless you're 100% sure that you're going on a project and you're going to build up a bunch of weapons and you're going to smelt them all up and you're going to put them all in there permanently, you're never going to take them out, then go for it. But on the other side, on the other hand, on the other side, I'm going to say it, on the other side, um, what happens if... A person were to, okay, I have Satan, I'm going to invest into Satan, she's the best support partner, she gives me so much attack, I'm going to put all these weapons in there, it's going to be fantastic, it's going to be perfect, and then the next thing you know, in a year from now, a new support partner comes out, they're giving you 100% attack, and everything's just power crept Satan, and everything's super good. You're going to be like, shit, now i got to take everything out and put them on that vanguard, or I'm going to do it all over again. Like, it's, it's a serious investment. And I don't think it's that important. I mean, maybe buffing their attack up by all those numbers is going to help them do extra damage. But in the long run, buffing you and, you know, buffing you, giving you attack, you're going to pump up more damage than the support partner anyway. Um, I didn't mention it, but you can rig it so that the support partner will use the attack buff on themselves to give them like 60% more attack or 45% more attack. But again, in the long run, that's no, not as effective as having them buff you as a player. 
That's that's their main goal is to buff buff the player. Um, but generally, that that's what the weapon does. The main weapon affects the attack. Everything else just boosts your attack by a little bit. Like if I tried to take out the Rising Cross Vault and swap it out for something, the attack only goes down by like 200. Whereas when it was the other side, it was a huge, huge number. Um, yeah. So I've talked for a while about these assist partners. Um, I hopefully got my point across about how to use them. Um, in summary, support partners are mainly used to buff the player, buff the vanguard, to bestow attack percentage buffs, element buffs, and then other little buffs like cooldown cut, movement speed, defense power, things of that nature. Um, Gako is worth uh, yeah, I, I think any of them is worth, to be honest. Even if someone was or were to invest in, like, Parvis. Like, Parvis, you can farm her dungeon, you can farm it every weekend or whatever, and try to get the scrolls because they are farmable. You can go and do that, but it would take a long time. Um, but that's a perfect example. So, Gako came out long before Satan, um... But yeah, Gako, Gargoyle, is worth investing in if you have her. Like, let's say you're sitting on Gargoyle with one or more scrolls. Yeah, they're worth investing in. Um, because I don't think... It doesn't matter how many scrolls you have for a, van, for a support partner, okay? Because um, you're at the bare, bare bones of it. At the bare bones of it. Every support partner has access to their attack 5 and their attack 4 and their element 4. It doesn't matter how many scrolls you have, as long as you level them, you can get attack 4 and element 4. And I believe as long as you level them, you can get access to the heal and the invig. Welcome back. I was just I was just wrapping up. You finally got your 105. Nice, Scoob. Nice. Good use of fever. Um... Just real quick to double check. I just want to see. Um, you still can. Oh no. I just want to see how what level characters have to go to in order to get like all their buffs and stuff. <laughs> so magic, you need to be one ten. And heal plus, you need to be 100. Can Gargoyle go to 100? I think she can go to 130, right? You can't even see what that stuff says? Damn. Hopefully they'll get that, they'll, they'll improve that when they merge you with JP. Um, level cap. All partners go to 130 base. So you can get access to 7 slots, 7 weapon slots, and all the buff skills that are important. Everything else is just for cool attacks and maybe an extra and the cooldown stuff. Um, but you can survive on one scroll. You're just going to be missing out on some extra bonus stats. So getting one scroll to any of these characters is still a good thing. For sure. But that does suck, Eva. I hope it, I hope it works out. Hopefully... I don't know, you can look something up online or figure something out, call them, something, I hope. Um, also, just a little tidbit, uh, Satan is supposed to get another outfit um, from the current update we have right now, the Valentine's Day Ono Komacho update. She's supposed to get the idol outfit for her herself, but they didn't put it in the game, like we can't get it, so they said it's going to come at a later date, but we'll see if that pans out or not. I do know that PC had maid events or something, and Gargoyle got a maid outfit. Kiritan gets a Halloween outfit and the taco outfit. Um, and the other Gargoyles get maid outfits as well. Yeah, like they, they, they didn't release it for us. We can't, we don't have an exchange shop to get it from. I can summon her though. Oh, wow, she just stopped talking right away. Is 
So that's, and, and they always walk around with their weapon. You never see, they don't actually switch to the weapon you equip them with. However, if they did, they'd be lit. Did I get both Kiritan outfits? Um, we could only get the first one. We could only get, um, the Halloween ones. We can't get the uh, other one. As of yet. But honestly, if they want to make support partners better, just like physic visibly better, let us show their weapons that they're equipped with. If if Satan can can show her weapon, I'll go get her some raids and make her walk around with some white brilliances. I would have her walk around with some white brilliances. Oh my god. Satan with some white brilliance? Huh? That'd be hype. I that'd be that'd be hype. That'd be pit my ride. That'd be that'd be so superfluous that it'd be worth it. It'd be so <laughs> worthless that I would do it. Cause that'd be lit. But they don't let you do that. Probably because of Kiritin, because she doesn't actually have a weapon. She just has her little noodles. So I gave her a bow. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay. Look at her go. She's just flying forever. What do you mean? Insufficient storage. Okay, so... Hopefully I've covered everything about the assist partners. We did get the odd question here or there comment appreciate it 105 comments It was a hour and a half stream been a long time since I've done anything like that um, I know there's gonna be comments that when I this video goes up There's gonna be specific questions and when that does happen I'll do my best to answer the comments on the video for sure for sure um Because I know people are gonna have different opinions gonna be like no, no, I believe this skill set is better I believe this is better. I don't think anyone's ever going to say, no, you don't put attack buffs on them. That's completely useless. Why would you want to buff your attack? I just use a mount. And like, like, I don't, I hope those arguments don't come about. Like support partners are useless because I only ride my mount and I leave the dungeon when I run out of stamina. The game is bad because I run out of stamina before I finish the dungeon. I don't want to see those arguments. I really don't. I really don't want to see anything like that. Um... How important do I think support partners are? I think they're really, really awesome when you get one. However, I don't think they're mandatory because anyone and everyone can get Parvis. Um, like that's that's awesome. You can get Parvis. You can buff your attack by 35%, and that's great. Does everyone need Satan to give them 60%? No, but it's friggin' awesome. Does everyone need Gargoyle or Kiritan to give them 45%? No, but it's friggin' awesome. So hopefully, if ever you get an extra scroll or maybe gala comes back and maybe you want to pick up someone or some event that gives you a free scroll that comes around maybe you want to grab one could be cool i might even if satan comes around on the next time we get gala i could just scoop her right up scoop scoop i'm supposed to use yozuru's on her but she's not in the yozuru shop which is kind of sad but um i do have a gotcha ticket so i'm gonna roll it Gotcha ticket. Is Satan here? How come I can't roll for a mana Jakku? Oh, here's the big one. Double up arrows. Oh, yeah. It's Satan in there. I know it. I know it. Oh, sweet. That's all the tickets I had? Huh. How do I how do I buy gotcha tickets? That's not even a discount. You were saying that earlier, but how do I buy them?
I wish you could see the face I'm making right now. Oh, buddy. Oh, boy. Oh. If I could trade sigils, then we'd be going in. Points for gotcha tickets? Points for gotcha tickets. Points for gacha tickets. How many points is it for a gacha ticket? It lags. 150. I can't afford that. <laughs> Probably. I wish it was just a hundred. If you notice my thumb going left every time, it's because I'm trying to adjust like the number. Okay. Oh, sweet. Hold up. I need to get 10 Komenus. I don't have 2,000 of those. <laughs> Alright, gotcha ticket. Go. Double money. Thanks. No, stop. I don't even want to touch this unit with OC because it takes too much OC. It's 200. I'm not. I don't want them to get any money from it. Oh shit! They heard me. Thanks, charge and take it. Oh boy. Oh boy. An ogie. Wow. Time to go for that gambler's fallacy. It's just warming up. Lag harder. That's how many Komenus I had. 4,000 points worth of Komenus. Are you serious? Wow, not 4,000, like, like 2,000 points. I guess I'll grab more. Because it's just Komenus, right? Go to Susano's place? Okay. I wish I could trade in status point reset. I'm all about that. I will trade those in right now. Three years ago, this would go against everything I believed in. But they gave me so many cudgels, I had to throw them away. Crashed. 